It's time for nap time story time. Yesterday, I started off by showing you a collection of some of the books that I liked most of all that I read as an adult. Today, I'm starting off by showing you books by authors who published them themselves. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to have a big company supporting you. If you have the dream of writing a book and becoming a published author, you can do it yourself. My cousin Alice wrote this book. My friend Atura wrote this book. I'm going to tell you about this one in a minute. Yusef Salam. You should know that name. He's part of the Exonerated Five. This was his first book. And I showed you this book yesterday that I received from this author, David Miller, and this illustrator, Jerry Craft, who also sent me a book plate signed by the illustrator and a book signed by the author. This book is very special to me and I'm so annoyed with myself because it fell and the spine broke and the book has fallen apart. And I contacted my friend Terrence, who was the author, and let him know I'll need to order another book soon. What makes this book, Reflections, so special to me is I was one of the people who donated money to ensure that this very valuable piece of history would be published. Let's see. If you know me from school, you know that my last name was Johnson at one time. Here I am, L.J. Johnson. I sent money to ensure that this book would be a published book. And now, a few years later, many people own copies and has had several printings. And here's the signature and the dedication. Thank you, Linda. Enjoy the art, culture, education within Reflections. T A R 41717. T-A-R, Terrence A. Reese. He is the photographer and the author of that book. I will be replacing it soon. Today, I am going to read to you a book by an author some of you may be familiar with. He's, he was a favorite author in my house when my son was little. These books aren't as well known as some of the others. The author is John Steptoe. This particular book is titled Creativity. This one is entitled Birthday. And the one we're going to hear today is the story of Jumping Mouse, a Native American legend retold and illustrated by John Steptoe. This book is kind of long, so by the time I'm finished, some of you may already have entered Dreamland for your nap. But let's see the story of Jumping Mouse. We'll look at the pictures, and then I will read the text. This story was written in 1972. 
Once, there was a young mouse who lived in the bush, who lived in the brush near a great river. During the day, he and the other mice hunted for food. At night, they gathered to hear the old ones tell stories. The young mouse liked to hear about the desert beyond the river, and he got shivers from the stories about the dangerous shadows that lived in the sky. But his favorite was the tale of the far off land. The far off land sounded so wonderful, the young mouse began to dream about it. He knew he would never be content until he had been there. The old ones warned that the journey would be long and perilous, but the young mouse would not be swayed. He set off one morning before the sun had risen. It was evening before he reached the edge of the brush. Before him was the rivers on the other side of the desert. The young mouse peered into the deep water. How will I ever get across, he said in dismay. Don't you know how to swim, called a gravelly voice. The young mouse looked around and saw a small green frog. Hello, he said. What is swim? This is swimming, said the frog, and she jumped into the river. Oh, said the young mouse. I don't think I can do that. Why do you need to cross the river? Asked the frog, hopping back up on the bank. I want to go to the far off land, said the young mouse. It sounds so beautiful to live a lifetime. It sounds so beautiful. It sounds too beautiful to live a lifetime and not see it. In that case, you need my help. I am Magic Frog. Who are you? I'm Mouse, said the young mouse. <laughs> Magic Frog laughed. That's not a name. I'll give you a name that will help you on your journey. I name you Jumping Mouse. As soon as Magic Frog said this, the young mouse felt a strange tingling in his hind legs. He hopped a small hop and to his surprise, jumped twice as high as he had ever jumped before. Thank you, he said, admiring his powerful new legs. You're welcome, said Magic Frog. Now, step onto this leaf and we'll cross the river together. When they were safely on the other side, Magic Frog said, You will encounter hardships on your way, but don't despair. You will reach the far off land if you keep hope alive within you. Jumping Mouse set off at once, hopping quickly from bush to bush. The shadows circled above, but he avoided being seen. He ate berries when he could find them and slept only when he was exhausted. Days passed. Though he was able to travel quickly, he began to wonder if he'd ever reach the other side of the desert. Then he came upon a stream that coursed through the dry land. Under a large berry bush, 
he met an, a fat old mouse. What strange hind legs you have, said the fat mouse. They were a gift from the magic frog when she named me Jumping Mouse, said Jumping Mouse proudly. Hmm, snorted the fat mouse. What good are they? They've helped me come this far across the desert, and with luck, They'll carry me to the far off land, said Jumping Mouse. But now I'm very tired. May I rest here for a while? Indeed you may, said the fat mouse. In fact, you can stay forever. Thank you, but I'll stay only until I am rested. I've seen the far off land in my dreams, and I must be on my way as soon as I am able. Dreams, said the fat mouse scornfully. I used to have such dreams, but all I ever found was desert. Why go jumping about the desert when everything anyone needs is right here? Jumping Mouse tried to explain that it wasn't a question of need, but something he felt he had to do. But the fat mouse only snorted again. Finally, Jumping Mouse dug a hole and curled up for the night. The next day, the fat mouse warned him to stay on his side of the stream. A snake lives on the other side, he said. But don't worry, he's afraid of water, so he'll never cross the stream. Life was easy beneath the berry bush, and Jumping Mouse was soon rested and strong. He and the fat mouse ate and slept, then slept and ate. Then one morning, when he went to the stream for a drink, he caught sight of his reflection. (gasps) He was almost as fat as the fat old mouse. It's time for me to go on, thought Jumping Mouse. I didn't come all this way to settle down under a berry bush. Just then, he noticed that a branch had gotten caught in the narrow of the stream. It spanned the water like a bridge. Now the snake could cross. Jumping Mouse hurried back to warn the fat mouse. But the mouse hole was empty and there was a strange smell in the air. Snake! Jumping Mouse was too late. Poor old friend, he thought, as he hurried away. He lost hope of finding his dream, and now his life is over. Jumping Mouse traveled throughout the night, and the next morning, he saw where he had reached a grassy plain. Exhausted, he hopped toward a large boulder where he could rest. But as soon as he got close, he realized the boulder was an enormous shaggy bison lying in the grass. Every once in a while, it groaned. Jumping Mouse shivered at the terrible sound. Hello, great one, he said bravely. I am Jumping Mouse, and I'm traveling to the far-off land. Why do you lie here as if you were dying? Because I am dying, said the bison. I drank from a poisoned stream, and it blinded me. I can't see to find tender grass to eat or sweet water to drink. 
I'll surely die. Jumping Mouse was sad to see so wondrous a beast so helpless. When I began my journey, he said, Magic Frog gave me a name as strong and strong legs to carry me to the far off land. My magic is not as powerful of her as hers, but I do what I can, and so I'll help you. I will name you Eyes of Mouse. As soon as he had spoken, Jumping Mouse heard the bison snort with joy. He heard, but he could no longer see, for he had given bison his own sight. Thank you, said Eyes of Mouse. You are small, but you have done a great thing. If you will hop along beneath me, the shadows of the sky won't see you, and I will guide you to the mountains. Jumping Mouse did as he was told. He hopped to the rhythm of the bison's hooves, and in this way, he reached the foot of the mountains. I am an animal of the plains, so I must stop here, said Eyes of Mouse. How will you cross the mountains if you can't see? There will be a way, said Jumping Mouse. Hope is alive within me. He said goodbye to his friend, then he dug a hole and went to sleep. The next morning, Jumping Mouse woke to cool breezes that blew down from the mountain's peaks. Cautiously, he set out in the direction of the coolness. He had not gone far when he felt fur beneath his paws. He jumped back in alarm and sniffed the air. <gasps> Wolf! He froze in terror, but when nothing happened, he gathered up his courage and he said, Excuse me, I'm Jumping Mouse and I'm traveling to the far off land. Can you tell me the way? I would if I could, said the wolf. But a wolf finds his way with his nose, and mine will no longer smell for me. What happened? asked Jumping Mouse. I was once a proud and lazy creature, replied the wolf. I misused the gift of smell, and so I lost it. I have learned not to be proud. But without my nose to tell me where I am and where I am going, I cannot survive. I am lying here waiting for the end. Jumping Mouse was saddened by the wolf's story. He told him about Magic Frog and Eyes of Mouse. I have a little magic left, he said. I'll be happy to help you. I'll name you Nose of a Mouse. The wolf howled for joy. Jumping Mouse could hear him sniffing the air, taking in the mountain fragrances. But Jumping Mouse could no longer smell. He couldn't smell the pine scented breezes. He no longer had the use of his nose or his eyes. You are but a small creature, said Nose of a Mouse, but you have given me a great gift. You must let me thank you. Come, hop along beneath where the shadows of the sky won't see you. 
I will guide you through the mountains to the land, to the far off land. So Jumping Mouse hopped to the rhythm of Wolf's paddling paws, and in this way, he reached the far off land. I am an animal of the mountains, so I must stop here, said Nose of a Mouse. How will you manage if you can no longer see or smell? There will be a way, said Jumping Mouse. He then said goodbye to his friend and dug a hole and went to sleep. The next morning, Jumping Mouse woke up and crawled from his hole. I am here, he said. I feel the earth beneath my paws. I hear the wind rustling leaves on the trees. The sun warms my bones. All is not lost, but I'll never be as I was. How will I ever manage? Then, Jumping Mouse began to cry. Jumping Mouse heard a gravelly voice say, Jump, uh, uh, wait a minute. Then, jump, then Jumping Mouse began to cry. Jumping Mouse, he heard a gravelly voice say, Magic Frog, is that you? Jumping Mouse asked, swallowing his tears. Yes, said Magic Frog. Don't cry, Jumping Mouse. Your unselfish spirit has brought you great hardship. But it is that same spirit of hope and compassion that has brought you to the far off land. You have nothing to fear, Jumping Mouse. Jump high, Jumping Mouse, commanded Magic Frog. Jumping Mouse did as he was told and jumped as high as he could. Then he felt the air lifting him higher and higher and still higher into the sky. He stretched out his paws in the sun and felt strangely powerful. To his joy, he began to see the wondrous beauty of the world above and below and to smell the scent of earth and sky and living things. Jumping Mouse, he heard Magic Frog call, I give you a new name. You are now called Eagle. And you will live in the far off land forever. Wow, that was a great one. But it was long and it's time for you to go take your nap. <laughs>